Say hello to what I know is going to be an incredibly delicious French dip roast beef burger. Think about the components. You got your burger, and by the way, we're grinding our own. You got your roast beef, you got your French dip, the jus, where there'll be onions involved, there will be horseradish sauce involved. It's gonna be one of the great burgers of all time, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you that, unless you hate meat. At which point this will suck horribly. But you're probably not watching if you hate meat, right? Or you're watching because I'm cute and charming. Right, Max and Chance? Obviously. Yeah. Thank you. You didn't think I had to ask for the support on that, but I'm glad I've got it. We're going to start by grinding some of our own meat. I already have ground uh, chuck, so we're going to grind our own brisket and short rib to complement it. So I'm using my stand mixer and my grinding attachment that fits in here, snug. We tighten it up, and then we tighten this part where the meat comes out because if it's not tight, meat starts squeezing out the back and that looks ugly and I don't like that so super tight that's what he said and now we can begin so I have three quarters of a pound nice. oh, oh what the Oh, you get it. So it really I know. Bad for me. I know. I realize that. So, but why I did. are you looking at me like I'm a oh, maniac? No, no. Because you kind of gave me a fucking a like I did it on purpose. No, I was giving you a fucking a because my ears hurt. It was well, nothing to I do with you. I figured that. Hold why on. Why are you so defensive? Well, it's just you should have seen your look. Yeah, it hurt my ears. Oh, sweetness. Come on. You're gonna be okay. All right. So I've got three quarters of a pound of ground beef already. We'll use three quarters of a pound. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So clearly we have a problem because this sound is awful. I think it's still gonna work to grind the beef, but because we can't take it standing right here, we're not gonna subject you to it. So Max will play something lovely while we're grinding. Max, hit it, and we grind. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna start, the brisket is different. So obviously it stopped making noise once it started grinding. And you know, one of the things that they say you should add to help get everything out the chute is a piece of bread that I actually do not even have. So I'll put a tiny bit more meat in. And there's also a special thing for plunging. I can't find that, so I'm using a wooden spoon. I'm basically a mess today. So we do it here at Send the Cooking On. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll cut this off in three, two, and one. Beautiful. All right. And the ground beef goes in like that. Beautiful combination. And look at now here's the thing. We don't want to rough this up too much and squeeze it super tight. Because what helps make a burger juicy are the gaps in between the the grind. But we are gonna season this. Only with kosher salt and pepper. And there's quite a lot, so we'll be generous. A little bit more. And we'll mix. Try and break up this guy a bit. Yes, I could have got a piece of just straight chalk or sirloin and ground it so it would match the others, but I was just a little bit lazy. We'll be fine. So when you've got this, let's make some patty, shall we? It's going to be a decent size, right? Decent sized burger. Oh, I should have probably weighed that. It's all right. We only weigh things when they're done at Santa Cook and Garden. That's true. That is very, very true. We've got two beautiful patties. We're going to save the rest of this for another time. Okay, so we're making our own jus. I'm starting with uh, almost boiling water. And this is uh, beef broth base. It's really just beef base. I think the flavor is really good. We'll get this mixing well. This is four cups of water. I want a lot because, well, you'll see why in the end, but. So it's about four teaspoons of the broth base. And then I'm gonna add a couple other things. Gonna add a little splash of Worcestershire, deepen the flavor a bit. I'm gonna add, which is untraditional, but I want it, a couple tablespoons of vermouth. Make it a little bit boozy in the nature. And last, a bunch of fresh ground pepper. 
because I like that peppery bite with my jus. And when it's there, we mix. This is ready. I can just set this off to the side a bit. We'll come back to that in a minute. So onion thyme, little onion, cut this end off, and then just rings. I'm just going to break them up though. Remember our onion rings from the other day? Yeah. Best onion rings ever. If I was ever going to cut myself, it's at moments like this when stuff is getting small and I get daring and I don't take my time, so I'm going to take my time because I don't want to hurt myself. So, little oil on the flat top and on they go. Hey, don't run off. Hey, whenever, I, just, I know you don't like to be forced on this side, don't put your back of your hand right in front of my lens. Don't you fucking find some other place to shoot. How about that? How about that, biatch? We just want these guys nice and soft and really gorgeous. We'll give them a little butter in a little bit. How's that sound? Oh yeah. And meanwhile, while they're doing their thing, I'll be making sure that I keep my hands out of Max's precious shots. Let's uh, let's make a little horseradish uh, sauce for these burgers. Those are beautiful. That's pretty, huh? 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 That's pretty, huh? huh? And we begin with our bowl. The first thing we'll add is some mayo. And then prepared horseradish. This is not horseradish cream. It's just this ground up horseradish. And you want like a kind of a nice amount. A little salt and pepper. And some parsley because I gotta have a little green. And it makes it pretty and makes me happy. So now we mix. Oh, I can smell the horseradish from here. Let's taste it. A little bit more. I love horseradish. If you don't like it, could you leave it out, Chance? No, I don't think you could leave it out for this one. Chance is right. Because it would then not be horseradish cream. So the horseradish is a great accompaniment to any steak. And think about what our burger is. It's brisket and short rib and then ground beef. But then roast beef is going on top. This lends itself perfectly to everything. But now that this is done, now that our jus is done, now that our burgers are done, now we're, now we're cooking. I want to talk to you about HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And I know you're thinking, Sam, aren't I here to learn how to cook? Why would I want a meal kit, even from America's number one? Well, because sometimes you don't always want to cook. Sometimes you just want to come home, have it be simple, easy, and all put together for you. Imagine all the ingredients measured out, little bit of this, little bit of this, little bit of this, to go together simply, quickly, and absolutely deliciously. I chose to make this, meatloaves with sweet chili glaze. And look how beautiful it is here, but look how beautiful it is here. And here, look, it's exactly the picture. Look, you know what you're getting and isn't that important? I know some of the other meal kits. This doesn't work out the way you want HelloFresh every single time. HelloFresh offers a ton of recipes to choose from every week that let you just bust out of your regular everyday routine. There's honestly something for everyone. You can go low-cal, you can go vegetarian, you can go kid-friendly. They remove the stress of meal planning and prepping. You order in advance, it comes. Pretty much everything goes together in about 30 minutes. Who doesn't like that? The plans come in two meals or four meals. HelloFresh is ridiculously flexible, it's great. But let's say you've got the meals for four. The meatloaf, for example, and you've made it, but you don't need it all to be eaten like meatloaf. Look what I've done. I've turned this meatloaf into this meatloaf pasta. And with only two extra ingredients, I broke up one of the little meatloaves, cooked it in a pan, added whipping cream. It started to thicken, put in the pasta. Look what we've done. We've absolutely changed it up. And I'm telling you right now, that is crazy good. So what do you do? You go to hellofresh.com, use my code STCG80, and get $80 across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. And then you'll be sitting back, you'll be relaxing, you'll be eating like a king, like me right now with this. Oh, come on now. And ginger and the rice is incredibly good. So let's do this. Uh, yes, the burgers have to go on, but I forgot I wanted to add butter to the onions. So let's just do that. Let's just let the butter start doing its thing right there, shall we, Max?
These are going to be heavenly. Like super deliciously heavenly. Oops, I lost one. All right. They can slowly do their thing. Let's get these patties on. Oil, avocado, of course. Wouldn't use anything else. It would be silly to. Oh. It would be not just a waste, but the wrong oil has a lower smoke point, and you don't want that. Well, so far, my favorite part of everything that's going on is right here. These onions. Hey, buddy, turn your horn off. I'll tell you something. One of the benefits of this blend that we've put together, the brisket, the short rib, and the, the chuck, is the smell out here. This doesn't smell like a hamburger. This smells just like the most amazing, I don't know, steak ever. All right, so let's flip these kids. Very nice. And with my left hand for Max, very nice. We're doing well here, guys, really well. That's going to be quite the burger, isn't it? OK, my onions are good. I'm going to now take them off. Wow. When these guys get on the bottom of that burger, wow. And I think as we're starting to get closer, I'm going to start to get a little color on my buns by putting them in the leftover butter oil nonsense from the onions. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, beautiful. And beautiful, they come off. So these guys are almost there. The smell is insane. Max and Chance are getting a brisket short rib facial right now. Our jus is ready. Oh, it's gonna be so good. That little bit of vermouth in here makes a huge difference. By the way, you've seen me use uh, vermouth a lot. And you've heard me tell you it's a fortified wine. You've also heard me tell you that that means it's shelf stable and it won't go bad like regular wine would once you open it. So keep a bottle around, it's very handy. I was flipping channels the other day, came across some dumb cooking thing, which, okay, you could call this a dumb cooking thing. And the guy was like, oh, well, uh, vermouth is a fortified wine. And he didn't say anything else. And I know it left people looking at the TV going, w what's that mean? Is this important? Do we need to know what fortified wine means? I don't know why they don't follow up with information. Oh, yes, I do, because they're all dumb. Fancy pants. They're all fancy pants. I think these things are almost ready for step uh, two or three. Or, come on, Max, come on. OK, so here's how this goes. Now we take this beautiful, thinly sliced roast beef. And by the way, we have made our own. We know how, and it's fantastic. Let me get rid of one of these guys. I'm going to do just one right this second. So a little color here, just heat it up. And when it's got this color, now we're gonna do this. Now we're gonna mound it up, put it on top of our patty. Shit, can't fucking open this. We're gonna add two slices of aged white cheddar, and then our lid. And in about 35, 40 seconds, that's going to come off, be insane, and we can start. So a little water will help this melt, and <laughs> gorgeous in there. All right, let's stop this. I'll get it on here so to keep it from cooking too much. Let's get the bun going, and we're there. Astro, we start with our horseradish gorgeousness. Oh, man. And now a little pile of our onion. Gosh, look at these. Come on now. You ready for this part? Because this is the crazy part, what's happening here. And in we go. And on we go. Oh my gosh. That's whack. That is truly whack. Lid. And now the part, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm not too sure about. The idea is to dip this whole thing. It is, a, it is something that people do. So let's get our jus over here. I'll move this. Got a plate. So here's our goal. Our goal is a full dunk. So while we're holding this, in we go like this, we go like this. We let it drip a bit and we put it on our plate. 
and we say to ourselves, oh f***ing God, what have we made? All right, so let's give it a whirl. I'm going like this. Oh my God. It's a mess. A delicious, freaking, amazing, best smelling mess ever in the world. Let's get a bite before I can't hack it anymore. Oh, holy God. This is an, un this is, this is un, this is ease. Unnatural. This is an unnatural combination that is so effing good. And the horse rider gives that little bite. The onions give that, that delicious richness. The blend of the burger and the roast beef on top and some of the edges of the roast beef have started to get a little crispy. And this ridiculously delicious aged white cheddar that brings the whole thing together. Son of a bitch. So maybe you dip it slowly. Maybe you don't do the whole thing because the bottom's getting soggy as F, but oh my God, it is so good. It is so good. Please make those. Please promise. Promise? Thanks for hanging out. Subscribe if you like the, the, the episodes. Uh, hit, the, hit the like button. Uh, ring the notification bell. It, even smash it for Max's benefit. And by the way, right now we're in the middle of Sam's Giving. You have until midnight on December 20th to become a subscriber. Leave us a note if you want. Make a comment on uh, social media using the hashtag Sam's Giving 2020 and you could win this Evo behind me. That P Caliber Pro Camaro over there. That Traeger over there. Oh, I don't know, a dinner from me at my restaurant Gray's in San Diego. And how about $5,000 from QP Mayo? We love them. And we love this. Don't miss out because you're not a subscriber. Don't.